What's going on, beautiful people? Welcome back to another Hawes Capital video. Uh, so what I want to do for you guys this week is I want to go over, uh, I guess we can call this a layer two video series. I guess that would be the best thing to call it. Uh, and in this layer two video series, what I want to do is I'm going to be talking about a couple of different projects. We're going to be going over uh, ZK Sync, StarkNet, and Arbitrum. And the reason that I'm going to be bringing these up to you uh, is because as we know, we recently about a week ago, uh, got the announcement and confirmation that the Optimism Network will be doing an airdrop of their governance token to anyone who are early adopters and users of the protocol. Now, if you recall, last year, I provided you all video series, and we actually already went through Optimism, Arbitrum and ZK Sync. And I showed you guys all how to go ahead and bridge Ethereum on over to these networks. I told you it would cost you some Ether gas, but there would more than likely be some airdrop down the line that would make up for this. And Optimism has confirmed that by uh, confirming us that we will qualify for the airdrop, depending on what you, uh, if you completed all the different uh, steps that they we're looking for, all right? And we'll go over that uh, separately in another video. Uh, in this video, what we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and kick it off and I'm gonna go over updates uh, because some of these layer twos have had updates in particular ZK Sync. Uh, we did a ZK Sync 1.0 and they had a test net which was on the Rinkaby test net. Uh, they now have a 2.0 test net that is going on the Gorilla test net. Uh, so I'm going to show you guys how to get everything done and set up for that. All right. Uh, we're also going to cover Arbitrum. Uh, we'll cover StarkNet. And in each video, what I want to do is after we go over how to get tokens into the initial layer two, we're going to go through and cover different projects that are being built on these networks. So we'll cover bridges. We'll cover wallets. We'll cover DEXs. Uh, if we can find any money markets and DeFi borrowing and lending, we'll cover those. Uh, I'm sure there are already NFT marketplaces i've already seen a few of them that have been built up so we'll cover the nft marketplaces uh as well for those of you looking for the nft opportunities all right so we're going to do a video series and we're going to dive into this and we're going to get started with how do i actually get set up on the different networks this first video we're going to get set up on the zk sync 2.0 test net and i'm going to show you two different ways in which you can go ahead and uh get your test net wallet set up and funded as well as where you can get testnet tokens from all right so with that said let's go ahead and let us jump right into this video all right so here we are we are on the portal.zksync.io and as you guys can see this is a zk sync 2.0 gorilla all right many of you guys if you followed me in the first video probably go over to your metamask you probably all still have uh the zk sync uh 2.0 rinkaby testnet all right we're not on Rinkaby anymore. We are on Gorilla. So just be aware of that. Uh, the team has actually made an announcement in their Discord. Yeah, where is it? Right here. That they're doing a regenesis of the 2.0 testnet. And all prior testnet information has been scrapped. So if you did anything that would have possibly qualified you for the airdrop, guys, you need to come back and redo it again, all right? So that way you can make sure you qualify. Now, to get tokens onto the network, it's extremely easy. If you've got some testnet ether in your ether test gorilla wallet, you can go ahead and just bridge that over. Now, some of you may not even have testnet gorilla. To get the testnet gorilla, I've already given you guys a couple of faucets. I previously gave you guys this faucet in the video. Uh, it's a gorilla faucet. All you need to do is paste your address in there, do the, the whole uh, I am human thing and start mining and basically leave this page open for about 10 to 15 minutes. And it will basically start mining you up to uh, a max of one full testnet Ethereum. You can stop the mining whenever you want to, but it will only let you mine up to a full max. And that is how you can get some testnet Gorilla uh, if you're looking uh, for a testnet Ether. Now, once you've got the Ether, the testnet, come on over here to bridge. Uh, and all you would wanna do is, as you guys can see, I've already bridged my tokens over ahead of the video because it does take five minutes uh, and that would have basically eaten into video time. So just decide however much it is you want to bridge over and then do deposit give it a little bit of time for your deposit to hit and then once it shows up you should see it right there in your uh your wallet you can also come back once it hits and goes to balances and you'll be able to see your balance has shown up for you right there now there are uh, a couple of there's a medium articles by matt
Shadow Labs that you definitely want to go through. They basically talk about the test note, the 2.0, why for it, the reason, and all the details that you're going to need to know about it. I've taken some screenshots from the Discord for you guys, uh, just so you can see from the developers themselves. Uh, you know, again, all activity on testnet will be raced, uh, deployed contracts and everything that you did on the previous testnet, none of that history exists anymore. So once again, if you want to be eligible for this future ZK Sync possible airdrop, please, please, please connect to testnet 2.0 and just follow along with the video series all right guys um and just so you guys are aware i also just posted this screenshot just so you can see um because we're only like four days up into this new month uh but right up until the end of april you can see that they were having issues with the testnet having um you know up and downs so if you come on and the testnet's not working just be aware uh, they are aware that they have um, a couple of problems. I just wanted to go over uh, a few things as far as the Optimism airdrop. This is the criteria that Optimism used to make uh, users eligible. Now, they haven't confirmed any criteria with ZK Sync, but there have been enough hints and stipulations. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, hints and speculations, not stipulate, speculations that there more than likely will be a token. And I just took this as a thought that, all right, well, if this is what Optimism is looking at, uh, I'm going to go ahead and assume Arbitrum, ZK Sync, StarkNet, and everyone else is looking at the same thing. So just by setting up the testnet and getting funds onto the testnet and the mainnet, we can go ahead and check that off. We've done that. Being a repeat user, guys, I'm going to go ahead and do a video series, and I'm going to go through all kinds of different exchanges, bridges, and everything. And I'm sure if you just follow along in the video series through testnets and the one or two mainnets that exist out there, you should be able to qualify uh, for the drops as a repeat user, if that's what ZK Sync uh, wants. All right. Uh, as far as DAO voting, multi sig users, and and donations to Gits, uh, I can't confirm any of that stuff, guys. Um, but again, at least we know just being a basic user and being a recurring user more than likely will be the best thing to get us qualified. Again, just a quick synopsis of uh, ZK Sync. Two ways you can connect to the testnet uh, through the ZK Sync portal over here that I just showed you. Another way you can connect is right over here with Sync Swap, and we're going to go over Sync Swap in detail in just a quick second. Uh, Sync Swap actually has a testnet campaign um, that you may be able to qualify for some future rewards, uh, and we'll go over that. Uh, it is in testnet right now, right now, so everything you do on Sync Swap will cost you nothing. Um, this is what the basic workflow is recommend, uh, recommended uh, if you decide to participate in this campaign they have. And it's the usual. Basically, you want to walk it forward and walk it back. Get your testnet tokens, do a couple of swaps. Add some liquidity to a liquidity pool, remove liquidity from the liquidity pool. Uh, they actually have a staking feature. I would recommend doing the staking even though you're not getting rewards. Basically, when you have these test nets, my recommendation is just do all everything and use all the features they have open and then walk it back and reverse everything you just did. So that way you did it forward, you did it back, you should, for sure should qualify. After you do all the steps, there are some additional things you need to do if you want to make sure you qualify for this testnet campaign. Uh, what you'll need to do is uh, take a copy of your wallet address. You're going to have to tweet and take snapshots of all the things you do. So take a screenshot of your transaction window, take a screenshot of your pool, and you're going to take all that information and you got to go have to go post that in the Discord. All right, guys. Uh, so a couple of hoops you got to jump through but that's only if you want to qualify for this SyncNet testnet, all right? So once you've got your testnet tokens, uh, and again, you've already bridged over uh, your ether, come over here to faucet, request tokens from the faucet, should pop up in your MetaMask for you, and then just go ahead and hit confirm. Guys, if this is the first time you're connecting to ZK Sync, I'm sorry, to Sync Swap, uh, what it will do for you the first time connecting, it will ask you if you would like to add ZK Sync 2.0, uh, what is this one called? The Gorilla to your MetaMask. So you can go ahead and add it to the MetaMask, all right? Once you get your test set tokens, you should see that you've got a couple million and a couple hundred thousand of all kinds of different tokens. Once again, guys, these tokens have absolutely no value. So please don't try to hold on to them. Just use them and do whatever it is, right? We know we need to create liquidity pools. So let's just go over here and start putting together some liquidity pools. All right. Uh, we've got some curve and we've got some UST. So we're going to go ahead and just approve that and add liquidity. 
All right. And guys, just do add liquidity. There's no like specific pair that you need to do it to. Uh, my recommendation would just be add liquidity for as many different pairs as you can. Um, and then go ahead and maybe remove the liquidity for as many different pairs as you can. Uh, and again, the same thing with swaps, guys. Just do a bunch of random swaps as many as you can, guys. Uh, and that would be it. So here we go. We're going to add liquidity. And that's it, guys. We've now added liquidity. It also said to make sure you remove some liquidity. So let's go over back to pools, click on our pool, and let's do remove 25%. All right. So we're going to go ahead and remove 25% of that. We're going to go ahead and sign to confirm. Go ahead and remove liquidity. And now we're approved the transaction. And that's it. They also have a staking feature. And although the staking does not actually pay out any rewards, I'm going to assume it might benefit you to stake some tokens because they did give you a thousand sync tokens. So let's just go ahead and stake some of those just for the sake of it. And really and truly, guys, that's all you're going to want to do um, for, for this test net. Make sure you come through, play with everything, do a little bit of everything. Uh, if it's the first time you're interacting, remember, you have to approve the transactions first. Then you have to go through and confirm. Don't just approve and walk away because you technically didn't do anything um, and you won't qualify. All right. Uh, and then once you're done, I would recommend coming on over here and just doing like a swap or two. If that uh, it doesn't have to be anything major, guys, like I said, most of these tokens don't really have any real value whatsoever. So there's not like a real peg or anything associated with them. All right. So here we go. Swap and confirm. All right. Approve that. Confirmed. And now we can swap. And that's it, guys. I swapped. I pooled. I removed liquidity. I staked. And that's really all you need to do. The only things left for me to do at this point in time would be to go ahead and take the snapshots of my transaction history, which uh, is pretty easy to go ahead and do if you if you want to. Um, you can come on over to your dashboard. You see your recent transactions. Here goes all the stuff that you have right here. You can just take a snapshot of that. Uh, as well as with your wallet. And then you can go over and post all of that in the Discord. I uh, don't want the video to go really long, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to introduce this and we'll talk about this in another video, uh, probably when we get into bridges. Uh, but we talked about getting tokens into the test net and the portal and sync swap will allow you to get tokens into testnet but if you want to get tokens into mainnet i'm going to go ahead and recommend you guys look at orbiter bridge uh and the reason i say that is because i used orbiter bridge to get ether into mainnet and i used the polygon network so it did not cost me anything close to what it would have cost me if i would have used the ethereum mainnet to transfer from ethereum mainnet into zk sync the gas fees were ridiculous so Orbiter Finance, it deserves its own video. I'll cover that in probably when we start our bridge video series. Um, but Orbiter Finance is a cheap way to get uh, mainnet tokens uh, into ZK Sync. Anyways, guys, I hope this is helpful. Once again, I know I already did a ZK Sync video for you guys. I know I've already covered like ZigZag and a few other projects. But because this is 2.0, we are going to recover some of them again. Plus, I know there are people who missed the first go around. So perfect opportunity for you guys to get familiar uh, with it on the second go around. Hopefully this video was helpful and I will catch you all on the next one.